Next thing is getting the system itself set up, so the data loads. Um, so for the SOM side, um, that's uh, one thing to think about is like your LD schedules. Um, so the, uh, the LD template, whenever you see that, um, it actually is going to pull the information from Oracle and pre-populate the LD template. So the tighter you have your LD in Oracle, the better it's going to look in Clarity, the less work you have to do in Clarity to get it finished up. Um, and if it's not tight in Clarity, then you're going to have to tighten it up in Clarity, and then you're going to have to LD in Oracle anyway one day, um, because Clarity doesn't talk back to um, Oracle. So you need to make sure that you um, get your LDs tight as you get it. I think January 30th is the, is, you know, that's the date that we're going to pull in um, LD. Um, so, and there's no reason to chop the same piece of wood twice. Um, the other thing is that if you um, are going to speculate new hires, when everybody does, right? So if you're going to speculate new hires, <coughs> PIs and physicians, um, make sure you get in the NEW tasks um, on the projects where you're going to burden those new hires in your budgeting um, scenario. So um, what we're recommending, to, so the first off, the nomenclature is very important. It has to be, the task has to be NEW1, NEW2, NEW3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're recommending that you put in twice as many tasks as you typically speculate hires in a given year. So what that means is if you speculate in a given year in your budget to hire six um, new physicians and PIs, um, put in 12 tasks, so you have new one through new 12 on the projects where you, and you, you expect to burden those people in the short term. Um, not that those people are going to be burdened on that in actual, but where you just burden them as a, as a budget expense for, the, for a forecasting or a budgeting um, necessity. And what that's going to do is that's going to facilitate the, the uh, contingent budgeting. So um, that's why I was saying that the contingent budgeting is a little bit amorphous. So it depends on what people, how people use that new one task. We'll have to change um, depending on what people do with that um, and how they use it. So that's the reason why it's a little bit, um, it's not 100% because we don't have used data to be able to know exactly what we're going to do uh, in a given situation. Um, the other thing is we have to launch, right? We have to get going on the system. So um, what we're going to do is a, a soft launch. Um, okay, we're going to have two to three departments a day um, rolling out every day for about six days, starting February 7th. Um, it'll be open to everyone, all users, um, no earlier than mid-February. Um, so that's our Valentine's Day um, present to you guys. There's going to be access for everyone and clarity. Um, so that's, um, that's how the system's going to roll out and launch. Um, the next thing we have to talk about is once we get this guy up and running, how we're going to support this thing. So one of the typical questions we get is training going forward. Um, we're going to have to figure that out. It's going to depend on the load that we have. Um, so that goes back to that communication thing that I was saying. So um, if we if people need refresher courses next year, if we need to, if we have new users that we need to train, let us know. Um, if you get into the system and use it and say, hey, this would be something I could delegate to somebody else, and I could delegate this out to seven different people. Tell us, let us know that you have seven people who need to be trained. Um, so that way we can get an idea of the magnitude so we can adjust the training because we don't necessarily use the same training for 70 people that we would use for seven people. So let us know what you think whenever you get in the system, start using it, how you think this is going to roll out to other people. Um, in, in terms of supporting the system in the short term, um, we set up this new uh, email, um, clarity at virginia.edu. Um, so that's the kind of novel thing for this system. Uh, for general questions and comments, you can email them straight to here. They'll get triaged out to me. Um, so if, you, if there's something that you're not sure who um, would handle it, this is a good place to go, and it will get answered um, and get answered quickly. Um, your normal systems of support, um, you know, if you have, if you have, you know, Nathan was there last year to help you through your budget. Nathan is still here this year to help you with your budget. So if you've got those those sort of normal paths that you've used in prior budgets are still going to exist. Um, so, but we have a new system, so we have to think about it a little bit differently. But nothing's going to preclude you from using those normal systems of help. Um, the other thing we're going to do is uh, walk-in help in McKim Hall in the finance wing. Um, we're also going to have uh, walk-in help in McKim Hall in the finance wing, um, 8 to 11 a.m. every day, starting around that, that launch date, that uh, February, mid-February launch date. Uh, we also plan to have uh, UPG um, analysts in there as well as the normal uh, dean's office people. Um, so that we'll be able to handle all of your questions, um, no matter what funds we're through or what model they have to come from. Um, so that's our that's our goal as well. Um, so what we're going to do is the support is going to come from many many different areas um, and come from many different directions. We're going to handle this through phone calls, through emails, um, through face to face, um, 
through, uh, uh, you know, through these walk-in sessions. We're going to try and handle this in as many different ways as we can to meet everybody's different learning style or needs at that particular point. Um, so, and let us know how that works and what, what ideas you have on how we can change that. Um, going along with the video that we're shooting today, uh, putting this up, we're also thinking about putting up um, short little videos on different parts um, of training on different little short sections of clarity um, so that, that you have kind of a quick reference to go in. So that way, somebody feels dumb going in and saying, how do I change something on this employee in the HR template? You don't really want to ask somebody, you can look up, you'd be able to look it up really quickly on YouTube or something like that and be able to find that answer. Um, um, so hopefully we'll have something along that line. So that's how we're going to support the system, um, kind of all hands on deck, every way that we possibly can think of to support the system, and hopefully we'll succeed. So the last thing I've got for you today, um, where is this picture taken? Uh, that's a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like asleep like that too. Great. So this is the rotunda. What was the rotunda used for when the uh, university was founded? The library, that's right. So, um, first time I came to the University of Virginia, well, I was 15 years old. Um, like I said, I was from Alabama. I came up here on a school trip and toured uh, EPA, um, amongst other things. And um, I took the tour and it culminated at the rotunda, and of course, in the dome room of the rotunda. Um, I can probably, uh, you know, recite that entire tour um, to you almost verbatim. Um, I love that. And I, and, you know, I fell in love with this place then, and I still love it now, and despite the best efforts of some of the people in this room. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so the cool thing is when you walk in the rotunda, it was a library, right? So there are the bookshops on the side, um, and as you walked into the middle, those bookshelves sort of disappear behind the double columns, and you hit this place in the middle. Um, so the, the rotunda is a one-third copy of the uh, of the Pantheon in, in, in uh, Italy, and it was built by the Romans. The idea was that they were the Romans were efficient if they weren't anything else, and so the idea was that. They would, why, why build a church that's used one out of seven days instead of just build a building, one building that's used seven out of seven days, and people can go in and you could collect all religions, pantheos, under one roof and make it efficient. So this is Jefferson's interpretation. It's a modern interpretation, in a modern for his, his times, was to take knowledge, get all knowledge into one place. So this would be the, um, the, the knowledge, uh, the temple to knowledge, and get it all in one place. Um, and if I knew my Latin better, I would know what pan knowledge would be. Um, so the um, so that's the idea with this guy, um, and the cool thing is that when you get to the middle and you stand there and you're in the middle of all this knowledge, right? And you're in the middle of this library, and all you can see is windows all the way around you. In fact, there's a window directly over your head, the Oculus, and so everything is crystal clear. So this is an embodiment, an architectural embodiment, an enlightenment idea. Is that the center of all knowledge? Everything is crystal clear. Um, putting a big tent, putting a big dome on the latest data systems of the day, um, getting the, the, all the information in one place where people can digest it, interpret it, think about it, is something that we've done since the day we were founded and we're good at. Clarity is the latest iteration of that. Um, what this is, is this is your moment of standing in the middle of all your windows, of all your knowledge, and then seeing nothing but windows, getting to a point where everything's kind of easy and kind of easy to see, easy to interpret. I really like this system. We've worked hard on it. Um, I hope you guys like it too. Uh, let us know what you think and let us know if you have any questions. All right?